you very, very much for having me here. Uh, yeah, indeed. Sales is a super brutal occupation. The, when it comes down to it, and this is a crazy stat, but one in 10 is considered a great close ratio. Uh, it's absolutely demoralizing to be out there, and nine times out of 10 people say, I don't want to hear it. Uh, when I was a much younger sales guy, I was pushing um, uh, environmental cleaner degreaser, and on my phone, I actually had a thing that said, you're gonna get cancer. Because when they slammed the phone on me, I was like, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> so, that's how people deal with this stuff. <laughs> they may not have, you know, I didn't actually wish it upon them, just statistically, if they didn't use my stuff, they weren't going to be doing very well. So, 55% uh, of forecast deals never close, and this not only wastes a lot of time for the salesperson, but it's also a really bad experience for the actual prospect. They're having multiple vendor experiences, and they're wasting a lot of time trying to get to a good buying experience. Now, as a sales manager myself, I saw this, uh, the situation that when the salesperson and the prospect were on the same page, when they were looking at the deal from the same perspective, then there was a lot less risk on both sides, and the deal was a lot more likely to go through all the way from that first conversation to, all right, we have a good deal to getting the budget. And so what we want to do is try to replicate that successful trusting experience and make it a lot easier for the buyer and the seller to literally be on the same page. To that end, DealPoint is a, uh, a service that puts uh, the deal on the same page for the, both the prospect and the sales rep, all the way from the first call, all the way down through to, to budget and actually signing the deal. The idea is that every deal has its own uh, room online for the life of the deal. It's not just doing one telephone call and then a bunch of emails. It's a place where the salesperson and the, the prospect and then the multiple decision makers that are involved in a big sales deal can get together and really see what's going on. So we're trying to be able to include courses, you need to have good communication. So we've got uh, real-time web communications, you can do online meetings, you can do screen share, video chat, that kind of thing. You need to have a place where you can share information. So we have a, a file share. Uh, you upload the files that are relevant to that deal. And this is so much better than having a prospect have to go through uh, uh, your, your knowledge base or digging through 100 emails over the course of what could literally be six months of, of negotiations. So everything's in one place, and then you can put some context in. This is why I think you should look at this particular document, and it really gives a lot more relevance to, the, to why you're sharing the doc. Uh, trust is absolutely crucial, especially in, uh, in high-stakes uh, deals. So by including a, a rep's profile, then first of all, you can say, all right, she knows what she's talking about, I'm gonna listen. But then, uh, even more importantly, when the prospect is saying to their boss, I really wanna buy this $100 thing, then they can say, look, Marcella really knows the industry, she's got the credentials, we can trust her. And that makes it a lot easier for the prospect to, to bring this deal inside, that, inside their organization and brings less risk to them. And then finally, as we say in sales, if there's, if there's no next step, then there's no deal. And so by having an explicit place where the salesperson and the prospect are both looking at the deal, and this is the next step, right, we have an agreement, it's, it's a lifetime difference away from the sales guy filling everything in in, in Salesforce and then the customer being over here not having that same expectation. So we're going to start off in this uh, relatively simple deal room where we're putting files and uh, meeting and putting everything in one place. Over time we want to add functionality like calendaring and email syncing so that the, the prospect and so, sorry, so that the salesperson can live in this software. Everything gets pushed over to Salesforce, we're not going to try to rebuild the CRM, but the salesperson can spend their time dealing with their customers instead of inputting into the, into the CRM. But where it really gets exciting is we're going to have this fantastic data set of what is happening on a successful deal. And so we'll be able to say, but by meeting three, if you don't have the CFO involved in your, in your deal, then there's an 82% chance that it's not going to be successful. Or you've got to get the next call within three days, otherwise it's going to fall apart. I think that's going to really help. Uh, make those deals be more successful. A little bit about the technology. Uh, we're using Twilio Programmable Video, which is based in uh, WebRTC to do the, the video part. And then uh, we're using Meteor and Amazon just to host the app itself and do most of the logic as to are people allowed in this room or are they going to be able to, what, what's the content of this file so that they can see that in the file share. Eventually we want to have it where they're also able to drop in their own technologies. And this is where, this is where our challenges come in. 
it's remarkable how many people still use Internet Explorer. Um, <laughs> what's really unfortunate about this is that IE, and in fact today Safari, don't support WebRTC natively. So what we're looking at is a way to maybe use an Electron app. Um, some people said use Flash, but really don't want to do that either. Or just go and have somebody download a, um, the join or one of those more accepted standards, if there's a fallback situation. So in closing, you know, if you can imagine boosting the entire economy, not by automating somebody's job away, but instead by uh, improving the infrastructure of sales, then that's what we're doing, and we can make a ton of cash at the same time. So thank you all very much, and I'd love to take some questions. Uh, we have a, I barely call it a prototype, it's a, it's a web page that works. Um, we've got 15 companies who said, yeah, the minute it works, I want to pay you money to use it. And then we're expecting three months to be fantastic if we can get out to market in, in that kind of window. What inspiration? Well, it was literally, uh, I used to work in um, electronics. So uh, I used to work at a place, uh, spin-off in Tektronics. And my sales guys were moaning about not being able to get the deal closed because the uh, decision maker would say no at the last minute. And then I moved downtown into SaaS world, and my sales guys were moaning about the exact same thing. And there was one night back last spring when I couldn't sleep and actually typed out the whole uh, prototype in notes on my iPhone. And it, it was called Sales Rail, because you rail the person into the deal. Uh, <laughs> since changed the name. But yeah, that was the, that was the, the impetus, was my sales guys moaning. Can you expand a little bit on the artificial intelligence? Nope. <laughs> no, that, that's just that's pillow talk, baby. Yeah, you know, we 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 really we really want to have that, and we're going to have a really nice data set. And there are lots of uh, AI APIs that you can call. Uh, but we got a pretty big roadmap before we get to that awesome time. Oh, I was just wondering what I mean. I think it's a really cool idea, but what's the barrier to like Salesforce doing this? Well, so it's a great question. Um, we certainly anticipate somebody like Salesforce buying us eventually. Salesforce cannot get their act together. They have, uh, so they have what's called the Lightning UI. And for 90% of what you actually need to do, you have to flip out of Lightning UI, which looks nice and modern, and go back into 1990s MS Access view in order to make Salesforce work. They're not in the business of um, copying people. They want force.com people to make apps that make their product be better. So I'd love for them to buy us, but I think realistically, they're going to be more interested in buying us rather than trying to recreate it, because they're pretty busy right now. Are you anticipating being able to deal with uh, RFPs? Sorry, say that again? Are you anticipating being able to deal, being able to deal with RFPs, request for Oh yeah, so that's a really, a really good question. And in fact, one of the, one of the, the visions is that <coughs> when you get to, uh, to this kind of area, that we'd be able to drop in custom modules. So somebody like, um, uh, there's RFQ now, they'd be able to just make a deal point module or uh, have a DocuSign have a, have a deal point module that gets dropped in at the appropriate time. Yeah. Uh, so if I send someone a link to deal point, then do I get to see whatever they're going in there and put it on the files? That's a great question. Yeah, as a, yeah, so part of the benefit is that uh, salespeople are just crack addicts when it comes to notifications of their customer interactions. So we will be able to tell salespeople when the, when the, set, when the prospect's boss has logged in and what they've downloaded. Uh, you'll be able to watch the videos that have been recorded from previous demos so we'll be able to see how long people are engaging with that and throw a push notification up on the iPhone app. Uh, and I promise you, you're going to see a whole bunch of sales guys like this all the time, just willing their customers to download something so they get all excited. And we will do that for them. Last question. Uh, so are you funded or are you funding yourself? What's this business? Hell yeah, I'm funded. Uh, but it's just me. So <laughs> no, um, there, there, uh, there are four partners in the company. Oh, sorry, three partners in the company. And two of us are putting in money. And uh, the other guys are working for a very reasonable amount of pay or uh, equity. Uh, but yeah, we really, you can't go out in Portland unless you have traction. So I think when we have 25 or 30 customers, uh, we'll be able to go to Oath and Tide and say, give us some cash. How can we sign up to be a major? Great, go uh, dealpoint.io and there's a big fat sign up button. What do you need from the community? 
Uh, the, the, the thing we need most of all is intros to sales managers. Uh, I talked to 22 companies to get those 15 yeses, which is a fantastic ratio. That's way better than one in 10. So the salespeople actually, they absolutely get the, the value proposal. I just need to talk to more of them so that we can get a really good core of customers in that early doctor program uh, in Q3. Let's give it up again for time.